My wife Lisa and I, we uh, frequent the Channel Islands almost every weekend. We live in Channel Islands Harbor. Our boat's the Baja Midnight. We're avid fishermen and spear fishermen. 90% of the time we go to Santa Cruz Island. That's our favorite. It's the biggest of the Channel Islands. I have all my dive spots and fishing spots. I love to fish. I love to scuba dive, but free diving spear fishing is what I'm out there for, without a doubt. With tanks on, it's, it's difficult to get to the, the better fish. We left Santa Cruz Island on Saturday night, anchored at Anacapa near Cat Rock, spent the night to prepare for spear fishing the next morning. On that Sunday morning, we stopped at Cat Rock to do a little spear fishing, spent about two, two and a half hours in the water. I got up on the boat to move over to fish camp, pulled off my wetsuit, pulled anchor, headed towards fish camp, and just a few hundred yards away from where I, I had been diving, we saw some birds working. I thought, oh, maybe we have a yellowtail bite going on there. So we head over there and we came upon a very bloody sea lion. And it only took a couple seconds to figure out where this was going. I got a good view of him, son of a god, that's the real deal. And the dorsal fin appeared. There's a large great white shark. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. We watched it for probably 25 minutes. Uh, at one point, the sea lion was trying to get on our swim step and we had to pull away. It amazed me how patient the great white was. It would just circle it and circle it and wouldn't do anything until a sea lion acted like it wanted to escape and then it would take another bite of it. We watched this for probably 25 minutes before the final attack and everything disappeared. We were pretty shook uh, with a lot of adrenaline pumping, almost shaking in the legs. It was kind of funny. We started to head towards fish camp. And as we were headed towards fish camp, we saw another sea lion, a smaller sea lion with a smaller bite out of it. Just one single bite it looked like out of it. It was moving along pretty, pretty rapidly. And we headed over to it. And sure enough, here comes a dorsal fin. And there it was, uh, another great white shark. It was a smaller great white shark. I'm guessing somewhere around the 12 foot range. And it did the same thing, circled very patiently, would only take a bite at it uh, when it tried to get away. At one point, a large kelp patty came into play and the sea lion hit it right into the middle of it and hid in it and it took about 10 seconds before that great white wind got him out of there. Uh, it was pretty amazing to watch how calculated yet patient the great white was. We watched it for probably 20 minutes and then some yahoo in a boat saw what we were watching, cut right in front of us with a bunch of people on its bow and got right on top of the action and everything broke up. We lost a sea lion, we lost uh, the great white and, and then they headed out and then all of a sudden the, the sea lion popped up closer to the island and we headed over there and sure enough here comes the dorsal fin and at this point the sea lion got I would guess within 40 foot of the island heavily into the kelp dorsal fin we, we saw the great white attack it uh, a few more times And then everything just disappeared. 
didn't see the great white anymore. We did not see the sea lion. And uh, we stayed there for probably five, 10 more minutes. And then we headed over to fish camp. Pretty shook. We uh, set anchor and I sat down in the cockpit of the boat. And my wife, Lisa, was in the cabin and, and she came walking out and she said, uh, oh my gosh, there's another dorsal fin. And I said to her, you're gonna think everything's a dorsal fin for the next year probably, anything that moves out there. And I stood up and sure enough, if there wasn't maybe a 200 pound mako going right by the boat, it was just shark central that day. I got back in the water the very next weekend. I made a point. Lisa wanted me back in the water. I wanted to get back in the water. I, I wasn't sure how I was gonna be able to handle that. Uh, if I'd start freaking totally out when I got down there. But, uh, but I did fine, and I, I dove almost every single weekend since then. So I got buzzed by a great white shark in year 2000 up north of the Pismo Pier. Uh, my son Patrick and I were on surfboards, and it was maybe 40 feet from us. Uh, we headed in immediately, and we were back in the water a few days later, no big deal. But I had never seen a great white shark at our islands, so that was a first and I've talked to so many commercial fishermen they've spent their life out there and they've seen lots of great whites but they've never seen one feed and we saw two feed in like an hour and 20 minutes probably uh, it was a pretty crazy day now when I was spear fishing at Cat Rock that morning I hovered over a angel shark and my rule is I don't kill sharks because of the whole karma thing. And I saw this angel shark and I, I know they taste good. And it was a, a nice one would a, put a lot of meat in my freezer. And I had my spear pointed at him. And I said, no, I do not kill sharks. Then I started to swim away. Then I pointed my gun back at him. I said, but he doesn't even look like a shark. Uh, but then I pulled away and did not take that angel shark. Well, a few days later, when I was telling this story to a friend of mine, he said, you know what? Had you have shot that angel shark, maybe old Whitey would have been over with all that thrashing and all that blood in the water. Uh, he might have been over to you in a, in a heartbeat. And so when it comes to the whole shark karma thing, what goes around comes around. I've always believed in that. And maybe it saved me that day, who knows?